It's here, it's Holy Week, and we are focusing on today what comes after. One of the expressions that helps encompass the whole idea of Easter in the American church is a phrase that I've heard said that I can't agree with more, but also hate that I have to agree with how well this is. And I first heard it, I don't know if he came up with it, but I first heard it from Billy Taylor, uh, interim pastor for our church on numerous occasions, unfortunately, I guess, uh, <laughs> but also leader of the National Prayer Room uh, and many, many fantastic resources, praying for my wife, praying for my husband. Uh, but he's been in the church world, understands it very well. And he said, Easter is the Super Bowl of church. And I hate, it's one of those things I hate to agree with you, but it is. And that isn't so much necessarily the complete 100% total fault of the church, but it is our fault and we take responsibility of the culture that we've helped cultivate where we are okay with people and we promote our church in a way where it seems like the only time to pay attention to church is on Easter. Much like with most of America, the only time to pay attention to football is during the Super Bowl. And so to help not completely change it, because I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna take a cultural revolution with inside the church of itself, which I think we're on the start of. But one of the things that we can do, if you think about when you watch the Super Bowl, you know, you'll see ads for upcoming trailers, but oftentimes the network that wants to, the show that the network wants to promote the most. Remember, it was CSI, uh, and then it was, uh, uh, I can't think of another one off the top of my head, but it was stay tuned immediately after the Super Bowl for episode one of this new show. And that kept people to stay who were there for the Super Bowl to stay and watch the show and hopefully get hooked into the new show. In the same way that you kind of experience that or what to look forward to, there are a lot of mistakes that churches are doing to try to capitalize on the Easter crowd. And I'm gonna set the record straight. So the Easter attendance boost that you naturally get, that many churches naturally get, and this works for Christmas too, if for some reason you're clicking on this video to watch it for Easter, is the mistake churches make is they uh, promote the wrong things and they end up encouraging people to only come on Easter because in an effort to promote something else of something else to come up and pay attention to, they end up actually promoting why Easter is the only time it's worth coming to your church. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to capitalize on that Easter attendance and get people to not just consider coming back, but actually get people to, to look forward to coming back. And it's not just in the sanctuary. We're going to go over that today. Let's get into it. Today, uh, 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 today's uh, uh, value is unreasonable action. Look, what got us here uh, is what's going to keep us here. And in order to get to the next place God's calling you, you've got to do certain things unreasonably. We're going to talk about that today. Welcome to the Best Known Church Show, where we show you how to 10x your reach with church marketing that will help you increase your impact, make more disciples, and become the cornerstone of your community again. This is for the leaders with an outrageous vision. Because anything less would be an inaccurate reflection of our creator. The ones who have unreasonable faith. Because you know God works unreasonable miracles. And the ones who are relentless in the pursuit of your calling. Because anything less would not make a good and faithful servant. If that's you, you're in the right place. No. No. Please welcome your host and guide on this journey to become the best known organization in your community, Justin Nava. Welcome to the award-winning Best Known Church Show. I'm your host, Justin Nava, and if we have not met, I take full responsibility for that. In this episode, and we're specifically in the show, we're all about getting your church better known. And when you promote your church around Easter time, or even if you just don't promote specifically, but you're in the community, people are somewhat aware of you, they have that habit of going to church on Easter, or maybe they wanna get their mom off their back or their grandma off their back, whatever it is, they say, you know what, let's go to church, let's dress up, let's make it a family event. Maybe we got a new baby, maybe we got some kids that are starting to ask some questions and we want to actually uh, uh, get our kids involved in church like we used to. Whatever the reason is, Easter attendance is just naturally higher. And if we aren't intentional about it beyond Easter and treating our guests in a way that we wanna be treated, you will unfortunately 
only have people that keep coming back every Easter. One of the pastors I had growing up used to say on Easter Sunday, this morning we're going to share with message with you, and I know some of y'all are thinking, Pastor Bruce, we keep hearing this, we're tired of hearing this, you're, you're, you're beating a dead horse, we've heard this before, and to which I would say to you, if you'd come on any other day besides Easter, maybe you'll hear something different. And I, that always stuck with me because I was like, yeah, the people who only come to church every Easter, they're just hearing the same thing every 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 year. And that same thing is usually not hearing something from their family or feeling good and checking off the box. So I want to help you capitalize on Easter to help grow your church. And the way that happens is you 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 look at the people that are coming to your church on Easter and you intentionally and strategically reach out to them, show appreciation to them, show that you've thought of them and their family, which is one of the things we're going to talk about today, how oftentimes Easter neglects the family in its follow-up, and the number one mistake that churches are making in trying to get people to come back after Easter, and it ends up encouraging people to only come during Easter. It's one of the most backwards things, and yet many churches continue to do it, so we're going to get right into it. Number one, what I see churches doing is either a lack of follow-up after Easter or not enough follow-up after Easter. And a lot of churches treat Easter like the end goal. It's the goal line. It's the touchdown. We made it. It's Easter. It's here. We did so good. Awesome. And then they, and then they stop playing the game. Okay. You need to continue the relationship building after Easter. And so the number one mistake I see is churches don't follow up or they don't follow up enough or they follow up and in the wrong way. If you appropriately follow up with your, with your Easter attendees, okay, uh, number one, you're going to help them feel appreciated. Number two, you're going to help them feel less commoditized, okay? If all you do is talk to me about how great your Easter service is and how much you want to meet me and how much you want to see me and, and all this, and then afterwards, I don't hear anything or I just get a, thanks for coming on Easter, hope to see you again, you have just made me feel like I was the end result and that's all that you needed from me was to come on Easter. And all of this is going to work together. So the follow-up has to be intentional and it has to be with a grander scope other than, hey, let's just do Easter. One of the things that we're experimenting with this year, and I won't have the results until mid-April probably, uh, is instead of saying, hey, come to our church on Easter, it's going to be a great Easter. Instead, when we would normally say, let's ramp up Easter promotions, we say, let's ramp up church invites, but not specific to Easter. Meaning instead of let's launch an ad and talk about all the great things we're going to do on Easter, instead it's let's launch an ad and let's talk about all the great things about our church. Because we don't want people to come to church for Easter, we want people to come to church for the church for the pains they're feeling, for the anxiety they're feeling, for the needs that are being unmet in the worldly solutions they're seeking for their spiritual problems. And so one of the things we're experimenting with a couple churches is uh, uh, what does it look like if we ramp up promotions for the church around Easter time, but instead of focusing on Easter as the end goal, it's really about the church because Easter is a one-time thing and once it's here, it's gone, but the church is here. So if we can get them in when they're already spiritually sensitive enough to go to church on Easter, what if instead of going for Easter, they go for church? Will that help with the retention and the coming back? That's a little, that's a little uh, uh, sidestep of what we're talking about today. But I'm, I'm excited to kind of see what the, the numbers are coming for on that. Um, so a lot of churches treat Easter like it's the end goal. We did it. We made it. All right. Let's take, it, let's take Monday off. And I'm not saying you, don't, you shouldn't take Monday off. I think, I think if you need Monday off after Easter, you should take Monday off after Easter. Uh, but your ministry doesn't and your communications don't have to. I'm going to share with you a quick down and dirty follow-up plan that I see effective after Easter. When I share this plan with pastors, nine times out of ten, those pastors, or I guess I should say nine pastors out of ten will say, that's crazy, that's unreasonable, hello, unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results, you got to take unreasonable action. Um, and nine times out of 10, or those nine pastors out of 10, will see their congregation attendance and connection and plugins return right back to where they were before Easter, uh, where that one pastor that actually did this will actually see more relationships and see more people coming back to the church. Um, so number one, uh, follow-up game plan. This is where people will tell me I'm crazy and tell me I'm unreasonable, and I will tell you this right now, I hate this. 
<laughs> okay? I hate this follow-up plan, but it is effective, okay? I also hate waking up at 5 a.m. I also hate sitting down and like when I wanna do something, instead I sit down and I do my quiet time. Sometimes it's like, I don't wanna do this right now, but let's do it because I know this is the best, most effective time. And I end up coming out of the other end better for it, more blessed for it, glorifying God for it. So a lot of people hate me for this. And trust me, I hate to be on the receiving end of this, but most people, feel one way, but respond a different way, okay? We, 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 we see this all the time in the world. Oh, I hate going to the grocery store. Well, guess what? You don't go to the grocery store, you don't eat, okay? So let's go to the grocery store. Let's, let's, uh, I hate delivery fees, all right? Well, guess what? You gotta go to the grocery store unless you pay 10 bucks to get it delivered or whatever it is for you, okay? People will say they hate things, but they'll do it anyways. People, when I share this follow-up plan, they'll say, ah, oh, please don't do that. I hate that. I would, I would run the other way. That's what they feel, but the fact is that this is what I'm about to share with you works. Okay, so let's say you have your Easter service, you've done all the preparing, pre-planning, like, hey, we're glad you're coming, excited to see you, all that stuff. Let's say your Easter service ends at 12 o'clock. So 12 service ends. Oof, might be time for a new marker. Okay, so 12 o'clock service ends at 12.30. If you're a smaller church, your pastor can do this. If you're a larger church, I understand you can't. You're going to need a team. At 12.30, you're going to call them. You're going to call your guests and say, hey, this is Pastor Joe. I'm very excited that you came. I was glad to have you. And I just want to let you know that means the world to us. There's a lot of things you could have been doing on Easter. You chose to come to church. I see you. God sees you. We're here for you. Okay? This is the number one thing pastors will check out. In fact, I don't even know, uh, did I drop uh, viewers when I said this? They're like, nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> um, I hate this. In fact, I thought it was creepy the first time this happened. But you know what? I remembered it. I appreciated it, actually. A few days later, once I got past the, well, that was kind of weird. Um, because number one, I, at this church that, that this happened to me, uh, I didn't even fill out a connect card. They got my phone number from my kids' check-in. But the more I thought about it, the more I felt like this church actually really seemed to care about me, I guess. In their own weird way, they called me. Now, a lot of folks will, will give me two things. Number one, that's too quick, that's too creepy. They're, they're, they're going to lunch, all right? To which I say, one of the things that I've personally experienced, I'm gonna give you two things, a fact and, and, and an antidote. I'm gonna start with the antidote. Number one, the, one of the things I've personally experienced, and I, and I don't like this, it's incredibly awkward, um, in my own personal men's coaching program, one of the things we're encouraged to do is send two thoughtful, meaningful texts to two people every day, all right? Um, and eventually you just run out of things that you can tell your wife and kids and you start expanding your network to the point where I'm sending texts to people that I met two years ago at a networking event. And I just say, hey, I'm glad we got introduced. I'm glad you're in my network and I was just thinking about you and you know, anything I can do for you, let me know. Um, actually, that's more of an ask. That's not an appreciation text. I wouldn't say that last part. Just glad to know you kind of thing. Um, it's weird, it's icky, it's kind of weird, but you know what? I've reconnected with these people because of that text. Um, and, and now it's got to the point where like, I played a video game with someone last night and it was my first time playing with them and I sent them a text afterwards and I said, hey, it was awesome playing with you. Thanks for letting me in your group. I had a blast, right? And I texted that within 30 minutes of us playing together. It's just natural now. I wanna show my appreciation. And because of that, they're like, oh yeah, jump in our Discord, jump in our group, can't wait to play with you tomorrow. It's not a one-time thing. It's the start and recognition of an ongoing relationship. Number two, the other, um, the, the fact is, and this is true in the business world, it's true in the spiritual world as well, the faster you respond to someone doing something for you, the more likely they'll remember you and choose to do something else with you, okay? Um, you don't wanna go on a date, and you're like, oh, I had such a great time. And then you do that stupid three-day rule, okay? This, we're not playing games here, all right? If you enjoyed your time with someone, text them right after, hey, I had a blast tonight. That was awesome. Looking forward to what we can do next. Let's talk about it later this week, right? Number two, a lot of things that, I mean, that's just a fact. The whoever can contact the first usually has the best, mem usually is the one that someone will decide to do business with or so decide to take a next step with. The other uh, uh, objection I get to this is people don't answer their phones. I'm going to call it from an unknown number and they're not going to answer or they're going to see it's the church calling. They're not going to answer. Great. I prefer that. Okay. But here's the thing. If you send a text, people are educated enough now to know that if they get a text, number one, it's automated. Number two, 
even though it says it's from the pastor, if they're if they have any modicum of intelligence, they will probably assume, even incorrectly, that it's not from the pastor. It's really from the secretary, the receptionist, maybe the youth pastor. It wasn't really them sitting there typing something to me, okay? Which again, at least they thought about me, but they thought about me in the same way that they thought about everyone else. Versus if I don't pick up, number one, I get a text anyways, because guess what? My phone is going to transcribe your voicemail to me, so I don't have to sit here and listen to it. Uh, oh, oh, I just noticed my light is in the way. Let me get that out of there. Um, but I can just sit there and read, hey, this is Pastor Joe Colin. I saw you came in, brought your kids today. Appreciate that. We appreciate your trust. If there's anything we can do for you, let us know. Otherwise, God bless, and you, that just means the world to us. Like, I can read that on my text, on my, on my voicemail app, and I know it was from you. Because ain't, ain't no one's going to be brave enough to call and say they're Pastor Joe and they aren't Pastor Joe. Number two, I recognize that it's not automated. This person actually took 30 seconds out of their Sunday when I know they're probably tired because they just ran a church service. And, I, and maybe I couldn't get up front to talk to them because they were, they were busy talking to other people. And they chose to call me afterwards. And they chose to call me like right afterwards. I, I'm at lunch. I know a pastor wants to be at lunch with his family too. Okay, so there are a lot of reasons to not do this. Most of them are baloney. Most of them are either lazy or selfish. Okay, and, and I'm calling it what it is. And a lot of pastors and church leaders hate me for saying like not doing things like this is selfish, but it is. You're choosing your comfort over someone else's uh, appreciation and the kingdom work. Okay, so let's, I'm just going to call it like that. Disagree with me. Let me know in the chat uh, what, what you think of that. All right. Um, you leave a voicemail. If, if you leave a voicemail, also text them. Hey, this is Pastor Joe. I just left you a voicemail. Just wanted to say thanks for coming today. I appreciate that. I see you. God sees you. Um, I hope today was, was a blessing for you and your family. All right. In this, there is not an ask. Love to see you next week. I know I, I know, like I kind of reflexively say that sometimes, but you don't. when you sit down and write this and script it out, which by the way, don't make these calls unscripted. Write a script. Hey, this is Pastor Joe. I was calling for, for uh, Jason. Um, saw you, brought your family here. I wanted to say appreciate you. We love you. We care for you. We care for the city. You're part of the city. And um, I just want to see, I, I see you. God sees you. Um, God bless. Have a, enjoy the rest of your Easter. Okay? Th that's it. Okay? And then if they don't answer, just send a text. Hey, this is Pastor Joe. I just left you a voicemail. I want to make sure I had the right number. I saw that you came in today. Appreciate you. God bless. Something like that. It should be shorter than the voicemail. Okay? Um, if you do this, you don't have to do anything else on Sunday. All right? Here's the, here's the problem, though. Okay? Because Monday, you should send a, a, another thank you. Okay? This might be an email. This could be a text. Um, but here's the thing. Okay? And this is another reason why the Sunday after church phone call means so much. Okay? Listen to this. If I get an email or a text thank you Monday morning, number one, I know I'm one of a dozen because you're just knocking out a to-do list, which means I'm what? I'm a to-do list item. I'm a checkbox. You tell me not to treat church like a checkbox, but the church is treating me like a checkbox. So if you want people to not to, to really feel heard, seen, listened to, appreciated, and loved, don't make your first contact on Monday morning when you're contacting everyone else. And guess what? They are expecting it. When it comes in, they're like, oh, here's that Monday morning. Eh, okay. I'm not going to read that email with the same intention and appreciation as I would from the voicemail or the text after church especially if it was from the pastor. Because if I get an email from the pastor, I'm pretty sure the pastor did not write it. This pastor's probably off on Monday after Easter. You do these two things. I guarantee you'll have more response, more relationship sparks, just by doing these two things, okay? Now, the rest of the week can be up to you don't show up on Tuesday night to their house unless you have food. And don't show up unless, you know, it's like, hey, can we bring you some chips and salsa uh, Tuesday night and introduce myself to you or whatever. Don't, don't just show up unannounced. I don't, I don't 
sad that I have to say that in 2024, but it is. Um, the other things you need to do are share stories. This can be email, text, whatever you want. All right, share stories. What happened on Easter? Hey, we had 4,000 eggs. All of them went. We had some eggs left over. We ended up taking it to the, to the women's shelter um, for their babies or, or whatever. Um, share some stories about what happened. Share some stories about what's happened in your church. You don't have to keep it focused around Easter. Uh, for some reason, Thursdays work really well for this. It's kind of in the middle of Wednesday, Friday. People are in a little bit of a slump. They could use some good news. They could use some encouragement. Tuesday, they're still catching up from Monday. Wednesday, they're in the slump. Thursdays, for some reason, I'm assuming uh, that's why, but for some reason, Thursdays, these testimonials and stories have really good response rates, uh, really good open rates, and really good, like, aha, I remember that rates. Uh, so Thursday, I like to send stories. Uh, and it could also be like, hey, did you know that every uh, every year we, we have about 50 baptisms? That's 50 people turning away from their chains of sin to experiencing freedom in Christ. And this is just one of the reasons why we're so appreciative of you and, and that you came to us because we know that God has a purpose for that visit, right? And, and by the way, here's someone else that came last Easter and got baptized a few months later. Here's her story. And you can just share her story. It doesn't have to be a, a, a big production to do. It could just be a, a story. It could be a text, it could, uh, a text, you know, uh, like a blog post kind of thing. Okay, so there's a lot more we can talk about, but for the for the for the purpose of this show, we're gonna keep it just to these three things. Send a call. Very very. Um, if you're not if you're not comfortable with a call, another thing you could do is do a, a video text, and I hope you can see this. Um, I tried to use a digital board and it just it just didn't gel with me. I'm a, I'm a paper, pen and paper kind of guy, um, which is ironic. I understand. Send a video text, all right? I mean, let me do one right now. Right there, I got my, I got my phone out. Um, you should have a script, but uh, hey, this is, uh, I, I actually started it on the wrong camera. So it was just showing my computer. Hey, Jason, this is Pastor Joe uh, with uh, our church. I wanted to let you know I appreciate you coming today. I know you're getting ready with the rest of Easter with your family, but again, I want to say how much we appreciate you coming. I saw you. God saw you. It was a blessing to have you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Easter. All right, that's it. 18 seconds right there. It's not pretty. It's not, it's not professionally done, but it is done with intention. Okay. It's the same thing. I would send my wife, Hey, I miss you, right? You were gone all weekend. I, I miss you. I can't wait to have you back. The kids miss you. Um, that's how much you mean to us. You are remembered <laughs> when you're not here. Okay. Um, that's it. That's all that has to be right there. Make a script for it. Do something similar to that. Um, so if you're not comfortable with a call, do a video text and, and send that to them. All right. Um, that will mean much more because it's much more personalized. You can't fake that at least not yet. All right. And don't use AI for this. Be, be real, okay? Um, so that's that's the follow-up plan. Do the call or the video text, but preferably the call. Um, do not make the first contact on Monday morning because they're just a checkbox. They're gonna feel like a checkbox. It's gonna, not gonna mean anything. And then on Thursday, send a story. What happened on Easter uh, or what happened in your church last year that would be beneficial for someone to know to then be encouraged to reconsider connecting with you. All right, um, that was a little bit more than I wanted to get into, but that's what happens when I don't have a script. Um, and already views drop because like, this is too much information. Well, this is too much to do. Well, I understand it's too much to do. That's why not every church grows at the rate that many of the growing churches are because their pastors aren't willing to do what it takes to grow. Again, unreasonable action is what it's going to take. Um, so, Number two thing that a lot of churches can do to capitalize on Easter attendance is to think of the kids. Won't somebody think of the children? Name that show. Did you grow up uh, in the 90s with me? Um, a, lot of, a lot of churches think that, and, 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 and this is true for some, what I'm about to share with you is true for some events. It's not true for Easter. A lot of churches think that parents are the sole decision makers of what church they go to. Um, when it comes to Easter, that isn't always the case, okay? As a result of that thinking, uh, they do a lot of, hey, come back. We'd love to see you when the kids are, uh, when, when parents pick up the kids. It was a blessing to have them. We hope you decide to come back. She had a lot of fun. He had a lot of fun, whatever it is. 
um, they focus a lot on the parents coming back. But one of the things that you need to realize is that kids can also have a say in whether or not the family goes back to church. And this is true of any Sunday, but it's very true on Easter. All right. You need, you need to give kids a reason to come back. All right. And this is one of the reasons why you should not just have a welcome gift for first time attenders. You should also have a welcome gift for the kids, specifically for the kids. Don't put something for the kids in the general welcome bag. Give the kids themselves a gift and give the kids something to look forward to. Right. A lot of churches will start a new kids curriculum the, the week after Easter. No, start it on Easter. So that way, when they come back, they're not coming back to something new, but when they come back, they're coming back to continue something that they've already started. It's a little controversial because it's like, what do you mean? We're not going to make resurrection rolls? Do that. That's fine. But give them something to look forward to that's not something new. Be like, hey, we're gonna, this was such a big thing. We're going we're gonna to make, make a different baked good next week. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep the toaster ovens up and we're going to make shrinky dinks. I have no idea why shrinky dinks are so popular with kids still in 2024. But they are, man. Kids love shrinky dinks. Do, do that for VBS. It's a lot of fun. Okay, but kids can also have a say. How many times have parents done things because the kids won't shut up about them? Fine, we'll go back to the trampoline park. Fine, we'll go to the park. You know how many times we go to the park because our, our son, our two-year-old son, just keeps going outside, park, park, and it's like, fine, we'll go to the park. It's not that we want to, it's that the kid wants to, and we know it'll be beneficial for him. So we'll go. So the kids can also have a say. You need to give them something to look forward to. Okay, so um, start a new curriculum on Easter Sunday. Make it fun. You know, not everything Easter has to be Easter, okay? It could just be like, Jesus is awesome. Let's, let's talk about Jesus and let's have fun doing it. All right. Um, give the kids a gift. All right. Don't put something for the kids in the general welcome gift. Give the kids a gift and give every kid a, kid a gift on Easter. Okay. Um, not just, hey, take home an extra roll. Not just take home today's craft, but hey, here's a special puzzle. We're not going to open it right now. You get to go home. Uh, here's a special card game or something. Um, Candy, eh, fine. You know, I don't like my kids getting candy all the time from everything they go, but I'll make an exception for Easter. Something that they can take home and like, it's like, it's like in a gift, right? And it keeps the, it keeps the memory, okay? Because if you come home with a craft, guess what? I'm not going to think about it again. But if I come home with a gift that I'm not opening till we get home, like there's some more excitement. The excitement and engagement of church is continuing into the afternoon. And for many kids, they're going to take that gift to the house they're going to next, Mima's house, Grandma's house, Gigi's house, whatever, right? And then they're going to open it there, and the rest of the family is going to see that the kid got a gift. Not just like the parents, which everyone gets. That's fine. Who cares? But the kids got a gift. They're so excited. Oh, that church is so, so thoughtful, right? Give the kids something to look forward to, whether it's a gift to open when they get home or a special gift that's just their own. It's not part of mommy and daddy's visitor gift, but it's just for them. Uh, and then, you know, when you come back, tell the kids as well as the parents, right? When you come back next week, we're going to, we're going to do something, we're going to do this again, but, or we're going to watch the next episode of, or we're going to do the next activity of give the kids something to look forward to. So when it is Sunday, they're like, Hey, can we go to church today? I want to go back and do this thing. The kids are not going to say, Hey, can we go back to church today? Cause I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to do something new. I don't know what it is. Make sense? Easter is episode one, not a trailer. And episode one starts next week. Give the kids something to look forward to. And we know kids will be relentless. And that could get mom and dad to church. Worst case, it gets the kid to church. So give the kids something to look forward to. Don't neglect the kids. Don't make the kids an add-on to what the parents are doing. Don't rely solely on the parents. But give the kids, uh, treat them like individual adults, not attachments to the real people we want. Make sense? The last thing is a big misconception. This is the biggest one. If, if uh, uh, um, it, 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 This is something that's going to be a hard turnaround if you've already started doing this. So, but it, it's worth it. A lot of churches will think that people will come back for a sermon. Again, they, they treat the week after Easter like episode one. Hey, if you like today's Easter sermon, come back next week where we're talking about the biggest myths of the Bible. Right? No, I didn't come here for a sermon. I came here for Easter to get my mom off my back. I came here because maybe I try out church again and this was the best time to come and be anonymous. All right? And 
I talked a little bit this a little bit about this on yesterday's Monday Fun Day. Uh, on Mondays, I do a little bit more free form streaming, talking about you know what we're what I'm looking forward to the week, what's going on in the news today. And one of the things we talked about was sermon series. If you promote your sermon series and use that as your marketing tool, people may come for your sermon series. But as soon as that sermon series stops, essentially to them, the church has stopped. You're baiting and switching people when you want them to come for the sermon series. Hey, if we can get them in for the sermon series, then maybe they'll stay for the community and the connection. You know. It's easier to get them to stay for the community and the connection to get them in for the community and the connection. So if people are, if, if number one, if people are coming to church on Easter and you say the only reason to come back to church is for a sermon, number one, you're alienating half of them because they're not going to want to hear that sermon anyways. Number two, you're commoditizing your church and saying the only reason you should come to church is because of a sermon. So don't, don't promote your sermon as the next reason to come back to church. Guess what? They'll be back at church. They'll be back next Easter. All right. Uh, number, no, the other thing that you need to realize is that what you should do is get people to come back for the church. So instead of saying, hey, we, we're glad you're here. Let's have uh, next week be a, a week to come back for the sermon. Let's just talk about why you're here. Hey, there are people here that are having their lives changed. There are people here that are fulfilling their purpose in learning how to live life for their glory, or for God's glory, um, in their purpose. There are people who have in community. If you feel like you're alone, if you feel like you have no friends, this is a place to, to start, right? What a better place to make friends uh, and, and, and find someone to support you in life and support others in life than the church. We've lost our third third existence. I, I can't remember, is that what it's called? Um, you have your home, you have your work, and then you have your third place to hang out, which used to be the church and now it's not. All right. For many, it's the bar. For many, it's the game shop. For many, it's uh, their friend's house in front of the TV. You know, whatever it is. Right? There's there's a third place, and it's not the church anymore. So, instead of promoting and encouraging people to come back for a sermon, promote and encourage people to come back for church. Meaning, we're glad you're here. We understand that maybe some of you only come on Easter, and we're glad you're here. And if we don't see you till next Easter. That's fine. But I want you to know we don't want you just here for Easter, right? Imagine if I went to a baseball game um, and I went to go see the Astros versus the Yankees and they said, hey, we totally get that you're here for the Yankees, but they're not here and for another few months. And you know what? That's fine. Don't come back until they play the Yankees. No, they give me something else to look forward to. What brought me in? Maybe it was the team, but guess what? We're playing another team next week, but there might be something else there that's not just about the team, right? So I may come in for a sermon, but as soon as that sermon's over, I'm out. Bring me back to church for church, not just for another sermon. I hope that makes sense uh, uh, for you today, because it, it, if you just promote your church sermons, you're just a commodity. You're no different than the Spotify app, except you're harder, because I got to go and be around people and go park and wake up. Versus, well, that sounds like an interesting sermon. Maybe I'll just stream it. All right. What makes your church church? Why do you do church on Sunday morning? Why do you do church on Saturday night? Why do you do church in person? And why don't you just, if you're just sermons, why don't you just put them on a podcast? There is something else there. Don't let that become the thing. The thing is Jesus. The thing is the community. The thing is following Jesus. It's the way. Make that the reason people should come back. If you do these things, if you have the proper follow-up plan, if you focus on the kids as individuals and get them excited to come back, and if you encourage people to come back for church, not for a sermon, you will naturally see that post-Easter dip be smaller. You will naturally see people coming back increase because you're actually doing ministry in a very ministerial way. You're doing intentional relationship building through recognition and appreciation. You're doing intentional discipleship to the children because you're treating them as individuals as God created them to be, not attachments and add-ons to the parents. And you're treating church and getting people to come and connect with the church for the church, not for the pastor for 40 minutes. You do these things, you will naturally see people coming back post-Easter. So try these things. Let me know how they go. Leave a comment down below 
if you're gonna try any of these or if you're like, hey, this makes a lot of sense or we did this in the past and it worked. I'm not the only one sharing this information. I'm not the only one doing this information. There are certain experiences that we get crazy enough to do, but a lot of this we've seen in other churches and I'm just sharing it with you today. God bless you all. Like and subscribe to this show. Um, next week, we will start to get into some of the ways that we can help um, Excuse me, that we can help, but also you can just do it yourself. Um, that you can start relationships by providing value to people, meaning showing that you understand them and you can help them before they even step foot in the building. And what does that do? That showcases that you are in it for a relationship, not a transaction. It shows that you can help people right now at midnight on a Wednesday evening versus wait till Sunday and maybe we can help you. And it shows that um, you care enough for someone to do something now versus waiting for them to do something. You can take the initiative. You can be the one leading the relationship. That's going to be kind of the theme for April. Uh, we call it intentionality. God bless you all, and I will see you all next week. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Best Known Church Show with Justin Nava. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated on the latest news, strategies, and resources that you need to reach 10x more people and become the best known in your community. To send us a message or leave a voicemail for Justin to be played on a future show, visit thebestknownchurchshow.com. And if you'd like to work with us so you can focus on your ministry, give us a call at 832-861-7654. Until next time, stay outrageous, unreasonable, and relentless.